Really what makes the Super Mario Bros. franchise so special are its levels, as there are some absolutely incredible ones that you come across during your playthroughs, some of which lead to you having a very memorable experience. One specific type of these levels that I've yet to make a video on are the castle stages, that usually cap off the worlds they're in, where today, I want to look at the best and worst from every entry, studying both the platforming sections found within them, as well as the boss fights at their end. Oh yeah, and before I get started, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. The very first game in the franchise is Super Mario Bros. for the NES, where I think most people would agree that the best castle level from it is World 8-4, the final stage of the game. This one's all about picking the right pipe to move forward to the next section, or risk having to get sent back to the last checkpoint. Along the way to Bowser, you'll encounter a few tough platforming moments with many enemies, and even an underwater section where you have to dodge the fire bars and bloobers. The fight itself isn't anything special, but at least you finally get to rescue Peach instead of coming across an imposter. In my opinion, the worst castle level in this original title is World 7-4, as it follows the choose the right path mechanic that's actually pretty hard to figure out. Of course, once you do memorize it, the difficulty lowers significantly, and this just makes it a bland experience with no enemies. The second entry in the western version of the original trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 2, which has one best world ending level I want to look at in World 4-3. The entirety of the stage is ice based, and a large portion of it involves jumping up incredibly slippery platforms while avoiding the fast moving flurries that can be a bit tricky. One of the greatest moments takes place right at the level's start, as at first it seems like you have to defeat the Birdo to somehow progress. However, you quickly figure out that that isn't the case, and what you need to do instead is ride the egg that's shot from the Birdo across the gigantic void until you eventually reach a platform. The final boss of this ice world is ironically the fire-based Fry Guy, who flies around the area spewing fire from its mouth. After three hits, the boss will split into four smaller versions of itself, which need to then be hit by mushroom blocks to be extinguished. This is a very different feeling level with a very different feeling boss, that really makes this one stand out. I think by far that most people would say the worst level from this game in this category is the final in World 7-2. This is all because of its strange layout that has an extremely simple route once you understand where the key is located, which unfortunately ruins any risk involved. During your first playthrough, you might have trouble with a few sections, but on subsequent ones, you'll see this difficulty diminish. I will give a nod to the unexpected fight against the Mass Gate, as I can't say that I ever thought this would be something that would attack you. Unfortunately, the final battle against Wart is also a bit on the easy side, so it's not just the layout that makes this one bad. The final game in the original trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 3 which replaces castles with airships in most instances, except for the best one we're going to look at in the final of the entry in World 8 Bowser's Castle. This is a platforming heavy level full of enemies that want to kill you, including the laser shooting Bowser statues, the high jumping lava bubbles, and a few annoyingly placed thwomps, where you have to make your way to one of the two doors that lead you to the Bowser boss battle. This is by far one of my favorite moments in the entire game, as you have to avoid the King Koopa's fire attacks, then dodge his powerful ground pounds, so that he breaks the bricks on the stage floor, eventually creating a void that will lead to his demise. On the worst castle level side of things, I guess I could really just mention any of the final airship ones from worlds 1 to 7, always in a 4 squirrel setting, with cannon shooting cannonballs and bullet bills at you. At the end of these very bland stages, you'll encounter the same type of boss fight every time against a Koopaling, who will have some sort of small change to their mechanic that makes them unique, but they still die easily in just three bonks. I always thought the Koopalings were some of the weakest bosses throughout the entire franchise, and I do hope that Nintendo retired them for good, as they're just too easy to face off against. The true Japanese sequel in the original trilogy only came out in Western markets with the release of Super Mario All-Stars for the SNES where I'd have to say one of the best castle levels from it is World 8-4, the final regular one from the game. This is another choose the right pipe style kind of stage, made significantly harder than what we've seen previous due to the tough enemies and where they're located, plus how far back you go if you make the wrong selection. Some of the best moments within it including maneuvering around the floating bloobers, encountering the fake Bowser, 
And finally, the fight against the real King Koopa, made difficult due to the obstacles in your way. The only other castle level I want to mention as good is World D4, found in one of the extra worlds after you've completed the main game. This is more of a straightforward, progress to the end kind of stage, but with a bit of a twist as there's an above ground section that looks like it's the end of the level. This is actually a decoy as this just leads back into the dungeons towards the final battle, which is a bit of a strange addition, but at least cool to experience. I think I can safely say that the worst castle level of this title is World 9-3, only because it's a very bland experience involving a fight against Bowser's forgotten brother. What makes this one even worse is that you can actually avoid this Koopa altogether by just walking on top of the ceiling, which is either done on purpose or is just lazy level design. The first handheld game in the series is Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, which doesn't exactly have castle levels, but instead we'll look at some of the final ones from each world, where definitely the best in it are World 2-3 and 4-3. These are both stages where you need to enter some sort of vehicle and use their blasters to defeat enemies and clear blocks off the stage that are in your way. At their ends, you either face off against the Dragon Zamzu or the Totanga bosses, which aren't very hard to defeat, but at least offer up some sort of different type of battle. I guess if I'd had to choose the worst type of this level, then I'd go with World 3-3. And not because the platforming sections are bad, but because of the strange boss battle against the Hioinoi. All you need to do to complete this is jump off the series of rocks the boss throws towards you, so that you can trigger the switch behind it. I get that Nintendo did their best with the limitations they had at the time, but this one comes off as boring more than anything else. I won't lie, it was pretty tough to figure out what the best castle level from Super Mario World for the SNES is, but in the end I decided on a few, starting with Roy's from World 5. In this stage you have to use the snake blocks as a way to progress forward for the first time in the series, which is a very interesting mechanic as you have to be pinpoint with your platforming, as well as being patient as you have a very small area to work within. After passing a few of these sections, you get to face off against Roy, who's able to climb on the walls and ceiling, trying to slam down on you. What makes this even better is that the walls slowly close in on you to the point where you almost have no room left to operate, which is a nice touch and makes things harder. Another level I'd classify as great is the final Bowser's Castle, which contains 8 different rooms that all have their own unique attributes and challenges. In room 1, you'll find an auto-scrolling section with pillars that slam down. In room 2, there's a series of climbing obstacles filled with annoying Koopas. In room 3, you'll come across a cool maze full of interesting Mecha Koopas. In room 4, you'll need to cross a few voids on moving platforms while dodging the little Sparkies and Hotheads. In room 5, you'll find skewers and thwomps that you'll have to quickly run by to get through unharmed. In room 6, you'll find an underwater section with balls and chains and bone-based enemies that want to damage you. In room 7, there's a bunch of Bowser statues that all spit fire at you. And finally, in room 8, you'll encounter the Charging Chucks that jump towards you and rush at you endlessly. This directs you right to the final Bowser battle on the castle's rooftop, but you can also get there by playing through the secretive back door that's only accessed through completing the equally secretive Valley Fortress, that's access through the exit in Valley of the Bowser 2. This is an enormous level that definitely deserves mentioning as it's full of amazing moments and a great battle against the King Koopa and his wacky clown car. Now if I had to pick one castle level I consider bad, then that would have to be Wendy's Castle of World 6, as it's full of annoying enemies that never felt fun to traverse around. The first section are full of grinders and skewers, so you really truly need to master where and when you can platform, as rushing will surely cause you to die. In the second area, you'll find moving blocks full of lava, along with little sparkies and hotheads, which just feel tedious to get around. The battle against Wendy is alright, with her appearing out of pipes alongside two copycats, where you just need to bonk off the real version to deal damage to her. I didn't mean to go so long talking about Super Mario World, but this game really has some amazing types of these levels, and I just wanted to give it some love. The second handheld game in the series is Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy, where I'd have to say one of my favorite World Ender levels is the final of the Pumpkin Zone. It's really the scary, graveyardy theme of this entire world that I absolutely love. And this is capped off by the Witch Boss Battle, where you need to bonk off her three times before she casts a spell on you. 
It's definitely a simple premise, but in a very amazing setting with enemies we really don't see much of in the franchise. I guess I do need to mention the final level of the game, Mario's Castle, or Wario's I guess, which features many unique sections, which is what makes it so great. All these areas are ended by the game's best boss fight against Wario, who at times powers himself up in both bunny and fire form, allowing you to fight different versions of this wacky character. The only bad level from this game I want to look at is the Space Zones, which has a very lame stage design that makes you navigate your way through a horde of angry stars. This isn't as fun or interesting as it sounds, but the zero gravity at least adds something into the mix. The first 3D game in the series is Super Mario 64 for the N64, where I'd have to say my pick for the best final level is Bowser in the Sky. Of course this is where the final Bowser boss fight is located, but along the way you'll encounter a few familiar faces and unforgiving obstacles that are found around this version of Mushroom Kingdom. Some notable parts include the magic wall you need to scale, having to avoid the obstacles on the moving platform, and finally, jumping up the checkered carousels to the pipe at the course's end. This is where you'll find the hardest Bowser battle of the game, as the stage breaks away, creating a smaller platform so it's much harder to grab him by his tail and throw him into the mines. Now in my opinion, the worst of these levels is Bowser in the Fire Sea, and not because of the poor level design, but because of the frustrating camera that limits your ability to properly move around in this area. This leads to instances where it's almost impossible to not touch the lava and take damage, so you're definitely bound to die a few times here during your playthrough. Jumping ahead now to new Super Mario Bros. for the DS, as Super Mario Sunshine doesn't have any castles, I'd have to say the best final level from this 2D reimagining is World 7s. This is all due to the snake block, as you have to get used to using it in this stage as there's literally nothing else you can even stand on for the majority of it. This can actually be hard at times as there's amps, ball and chains, and plenty of flame burners that can deal you damage, so you always have to be on your toes till the very end. The boss fight here is against the Lack of Thunder, a gigantic Lakitu that blasts lightning bolts and swoops down from the sky to damage you. This cool boss is the perfect way to end this equally cool level, which will never get tired of playing. The final level of the game, the World 8 Castle, also has to be showcased as it has a very interesting mechanic, letting you turn the world upside down so that you can solve puzzles and progress through it. This is a new type of feature that we haven't seen up to this particular game, but one we'll sort of see again in future titles. The boss fight isn't as grand as I'd like however, as you just have to jump over the regular Bowser and Bowser Jr. so that you can trigger the switch destroying the bridge. In my opinion the worst castle level would have to be that of World 1, only because it's not a hard experience and doesn't really deviate away from anything we've seen before. I guess this is sorta of here by default, as every other one of these levels are tons of fun to play, and this one is just okay. Up next is Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii where one of my favorite Bowser levels from it is his Dark Matter plant, found in the bedroom. Most of the planets in this galaxy are covered in Dark Matter that instantly kills you if you touch it, and of course there's many platforming sections where you can easily fall into it. The best part would have to be when you need to ride the platforms through the gravity areas which change direction depending on which way the arrows are pointing. I can't even explain how trippy this experience is, and it may take you a bit to figure out how to properly maneuver. The boss fight against Bowser is pretty similar across this entire game, as you have to get him to slam down on the glass, exposing the lava, leaving him open for attacks. The final Bowser level of the game, his Galaxy Reactor, also needs to be mentioned in this video, as it's a really grand area that really shows off the game's different features. There's a starting section where you need to walk within the gravity spotlights, the lava planet where you need to jump between falling platforms, the ice planet in which ice block platforms materialize in thin air revealing the path, the sand planet that has a series of fire bars that you need to jump over, the space junk area that has blocks that appear in front of you and includes parts with gravity sections, the lava tower planet where you need to jump between moving platforms inside a cylinder of lava, and finally the stairway which you need to climb up while avoiding Bowser Jr's attacks. The boss fight isn't even the real reason this level's on this list, as the platforming itself is the memorable part. I think it's quite obvious that Bowser Jr's lava reactor is the worst of this type of level in this game, 
as it just has a very short platforming section leading up to the King Caliente fight. This unfortunately just feels incomplete, but at least the fight itself is great. I had a really hard time figuring out the best castle level in New Super Mario Bros. for the Wii, but in the end, I decided to go with the final one from World 8, mainly due to the incredible, platforming-oriented fight against the King Koopa. That's because you're chased by a giant version of him, needing to stay ahead of his claw attacks that break away the stage, as well as dodge the fireballs he shoots towards you. This was a very unexpected occurrence that greatly improves the usual hit the switch and break the bridge kind of gameplay. Now the worst level spot has to go to the World 2 Bowser's Castle, only because it contains a forced auto scroll, where the majority of it is just long empty platforms. I just don't think this stage pushed the envelope enough and it doesn't add anything new, plus its low difficulty makes it forgettable. Super Mario Galaxy 2 for the Wii is up next in the series, where my personal favorite Bowser-based galaxy is his Lava Lair, which is jam-packed full of lava-based platforming. Some of it's simple like having to jump on moving platforms or pass a few formidable enemies, but there are also hard moments, like needing to understand how the flomps work so they don't spin you into the lava. There's also a snake block section which I always love doing, especially in this 3D format, as it's a great changeup from what you're used to in the 2D realm. These bigger Bowser levels all contain the same boss fight, so the battle itself isn't really part of the discussion here, but I think the level design speaks for itself. Now, I'd have to put Bowser Jr.'s Fiery Flotilla on the worst side of this video, as it's a very short stage, with a relatively easy fight against the Gobblegut. You can tell this is intentionally made easier and put at the beginning of this game, which at the end of the day, does make it bad. Next up is Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS, where I think the second Bowser's Castle of World 8 is definitely the best. To begin this stage, you'll find yourself on a bone coaster that's moving relatively fast, while also dodging the endless fire coming at you. This gets really fun during the long lava hallway, where you're needing to move back and forth to avoid the fireballs that are shot at you. The Bowser fight, however, is where this level really shines, as you have to platform through breakable block sections towards the very top of this gigantic castle, ending things with a chase down section, having to run away from Bowser while avoiding the random brick blocks. On the worst castle side of things, I'd have to go with the one from Special 1, only because it really doesn't change much at all from its World 1 counterpart. Well, this is of course other than the amount of time you have to complete it, as you start with only 30 seconds on the timer, needing to collect stopwatches to increase it. Although this is tedious, it really isn't very hard, and I feel like they were lazy and not wanting to switch things up a bit more. New Super Mario Bros. 2 is the next game in that specific subseries, where I think that one of the best levels from it is the Mushroom World Castle. Here you have to traverse unbreakable blocks, running away from the humongous spiked ball that completely destroys everything in its path. This makes you have to be pretty quick on your feet, as one misstep will cause you to get caught up in the mayhem, but it shouldn't be that difficult as long as you aren't rushing. Another amazing level I have to show off is World 8's second castle, as it has one very unique section within it, where you have to hide behind a series of walls to avoid getting turned into stone by the Koopalings riding in their clown car. This is made tough due to the different types of platforms you have to traverse on, so there are many times where you have to wait until you know you can move forward. The final fight against Bowser is also worth mentioning here, as after you think you've defeated him at the bridge, the Koopalings use their magic to regenerate him, while also making him much, much, much larger. Here instead of engaging in combat, you have to platform vertically avoiding the swipes from his claws and fire that he breathes across the entire screen, going upwards until you finally reach the mega switch. Once you trigger it, this amazing fight ends, and you'll finally be able to rescue the princess in this unforgettable moment. One castle based level that I never felt was anything special is the one located in World 4, that's full of bigger spike balls, but they never really seem to get in your way. There's just nothing that really sticks out in this stage, and the boss fight against the Morton Koopa Jr. is also pretty lame, so it's easy to put it on this side of the video. The final full game of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came up for the Wii U in 2012, where I'd have to say that my favorite castle stage from it is the first you encounter in World 8, also known as Red Hot Elevator Ride. 
Here you have to ride an elevator platform upwards in this vertical stage, actually controlling its movements depending on where you're standing on it. As you can see, the platform also has a number in the middle of it, which is actually an indicator of how many things it can hold or else it gets overloaded and stops, meaning you have to clear the path of enemies and coins to ensure you aren't swallowed by the lava. This really can be a tricky mechanic to get used to at times, and I'd be very surprised if you're able to finish it without taking any damage. One level I never really thought was all that good is Roy's Conveyor Castle from World 6. Only because all that lava seems like it would be difficult to platform through, but in the end, it turns out to actually be really easy. I guess this is a bit nitpicky, as it isn't the worst experience, but in my opinion, it just doesn't hold up to the other similar types of levels you see in this entry. Next, we're going to look at castle levels from the new Super Luigi U game mode, where I think one of the best from it is the Larry's Trigger Happy one, found at the end of the Sparkling Waters world. Here you'll encounter a plethora of bullet bill based enemies that are fired towards you from all directions. And this extends even to the underwater sections, as torpedo teds are unleashed that hone in on you trying to damage you. The final part of the level is also a lot of fun, as the gigantic king bill is fired from the left side of the screen, and your objective is to outrun it by skillfully jumping between bricks. It's a bit gimmicky, and I do get why some people think it's annoying, but I absolutely adore it. The only other stage I feel like is worth mentioning is the first castle of World 8, called Kern Event, where you need to use that elevator platform again we saw earlier, but this time in a horizontal environment. It's really just the different, unique feel that propels this one above all others, even if it definitely could have been a much longer stage. One level I absolutely hate playing through is Ludwig's Block Press Castle, only because it contains extremely large mechanical blocks that pretty much take up half the screen. These move back and forth, trying to push you into the void below. And there's just something about this weird feature I don't like, as it almost seems lazy and added at the last minute. The final game that has castle levels in this video is Super Mario 3D World, which has a few that are worth mentioning, starting with Bowser's Highway Showdown. This is because it features a really cool battle against the King Koopa in his convertible, where he throws kick bombs out of the back towards you, where you obviously have to kick them back to him in return to deal damage. This is just a very different type of battle that we've never seen before in the franchise, and was a great surprise when it first came up during my playthrough. I feel like I also have to mention the final Bowser level against him and his great tower, as he turns into his Meowser version, also powering up with the cherry to create multiple variants of himself. Here you don't actually fight the boss, but instead need to carefully scale up to the top of the Mammoth Tower, while avoiding the big bat who breaks through the walls trying to damage you, while also dealing with the forced auto scroll. You might fail a few times when you first come across this very cool battle concept, but for a final challenge, it really isn't that hard. The only world ending level I feel like deserves to be on the worst side of this video is the Lava Rock Lair, which features exactly that, plenty of lava and plenty of rocks. Although being able to cause mayhem by picking up and throwing the boulders is a lot of fun, there just isn't enough substance here to make things memorable, and this is really the main reason I consider it to be bad. Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like, comment below what you thought about it, and of course subscribe to my channel. Also, I do have an Instagram at copycatgamer, so go give me a follow. There I upload some cool clips and items from my collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!